Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Now, <clears throat> as always, you can find me on either BitChute, YouTube, Facebook, and OneWay. And today, today I want to change gears a little bit. Uh, because I want to discuss, because uh, we've been doing the whole uh, Bible contradictions thing. But I want to change gears a little bit because I've, uh, I came across something very interesting. And something I felt compelled to speak on, right? Um... I like to watch debates and things of that sort um, between uh, uh, between atheists <laughs> and Christians because um, I feel there's a lot to be learned from the people that engage in these in these particular kinds of things and um, I came across one one in particular right it's between two gentlemen um, by the name of <clears throat> will now most of you will be will familiar with with these names um william lane craig and jeff hester right um what i'll do is i'll put the link below for you guys to have a look at it <coughs> so you can watch it for yourself um and it would be it would be good for you to go and have a look at it and so you can sort of see what i'm talking about i'm going to show you a small clip um now william lane craig is obviously he's a professional philosopher theologian etc right uh, and a Christian and 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 Jeff Hester is is the evolutionist and uh, or is the atheist and he's arguing in favor of of atheism and he and he's a physicist he's in general his his profession is is physics right that's his that's his speciality and he in his argument he mentions something which I found particularly salient <laughs> where he mentions evolutionary algorithms and how those algorithms are applied to engineering. Now, the reason why I found this interesting is because I myself am an engineer. And when I watched what he, this little particular portion of what he said about how evolution is being applied to engineering and how the algorithms and how the search al algorithms are somehow prove evolution or is using incorporating evolution, uh, I, I I couldn't because I'm an engineer. I couldn't actually believe what I was saying. So <laughs> here, just to give you a, a more or less of an idea of where I'm at in terms of now. First of all, just for the sake of transparency, I've never ever in my entire life gained a formal qualification or education in engineering ever. All right, I I left high school and I went straight into the workplace. Right. So from as soon as soon as the school system no longer required me. I went straight to work and I've been involved in anything in everything from electrical engineering all the way through to mechanical engineering, depending on what it was that the company I was working with uh, wanted from me. So whether it was electrical based, whether it was mecha mechanically based or whether it was uh, service engineering. So it meant that I would I would go out on site uh, because the machine had a problem and the machine had broken down and meant a lot of traveling around and all that kind of stuff and it was my responsibility to fault find and then fix the machine and make sure it was back up and running and all that sort of thing so just to give you an idea of what i'm dealing with today right so as we speak uh the company that <laughs> that i work with just to give you an idea of the kind of machines that that i'm currently involved in here's an example this is uh, what we call a non-destructive testing. So basically you put a panel in the middle over there and this machine scans it using ultra ultrasonics in order. It's what we call non-destructive testing in the industry. So it's very, very commonly used in the aerospace, uh, uh, aerospace, military, um, research, all kinds of things. So we've got, so people like Rolls Royce have got us, uh, has got, I've got our stuff, Boeing, uh, uh, Airbus, spirit etc i mean there's just there's just th hundreds of them and then our stuff our smaller machines do end up in uh, laboratories in universities where they are uh, doing research on composite materials various different composite materials development of various composite materials for use in various applications and this is very very good to use as a non-destructive as a means of non-destructive testing um <coughs> 
and so on and so forth. It's part of quality control and, and a whole bunch of other things, right? So this machine is absolutely massive. Um, I don't know, the photo doesn't really do it justice. This is now in sight. And this machine, even though it looks parallel to the floor, it actually goes down into the into the floor by about another half meter or so because the whole the whole base of this thing is actually a big water reservoir because the ultra the ultrasound uh the ultrasound goes is is pulsed through a jet a, a jet stream of water um this is a this is a basic plan and uh, of uh, uh how can you say a design plan of a machine we're currently building it's actually already been announced so I've, nothing i'm telling you here is a secret or anything like that I'm not violating any laws uh, we're, we are literally building this machine as we speak right now this thing is absolutely massive so from the bottom of this machine to the top there is something like four and a half uh five meters tall this thing is uh easily is about is easily 10 10 odd meters wide is a massive turntable in the center and then we've got a, ro uh, a robot um, so everyone everyone wants robotics these days so we recently about two years uh, years ago got in, got into robotics um, so the robotic arms are, are responsible for the scanning and then I believe this is going to be scanning um, uh, cowling for jet turbines if I'm not mistaken this is that same machine actually so this here is this is it right right uh, right now that we're building um you can see it there this is the workshop that that we're in and um you can see how massive these things are this this machine's ridiculously is, is ridiculously huge i mean unbelievable it's actually it's actually a lot of fun to build it um and and we so we some of the parts we manufacture on site should i say some of the parts i manufacture on site i'm one of i'm one of two engineers that that's mostly responsible for operating the the mills and the and the lathes to actually turn out the parts that we need uh, that then go on this machine um and and then i'm also i'm also responsible for assembly and all that kind of stuff uh, sometimes these installations and things like that so that's basically what i do at this company and other companies i've also sometimes we pro i prototype so usually usually if we're prototyping um the guys will bring the drawings to me and i'll and i'll basically see if i can if if a if it if i can make it or if it can be made um and and then because it's just the once off to see if if it's going to work um, because all of them, a lot of them, we're constantly involved in research and development, and a lot of the companies that deal with us are one things that are completely, completely unique to that. So our stuff is quite bespoke. Um, there's a smaller machine, so this one, this one, this is typically the kind of thing that would go in a laboratory somewhere. It's very small. It's only about two and a half meters by about one and a half meters so or so. And then these these um, these fixtures here. It's basically what we call a light curtain. It's a safe a safety so basically it's a it's a almost like a laser beam and if you and if you cross the laser beam it then sw cuts the machine out so that no one get because this this here this bridge it moves up and down and everything like and you know it's just a whole safety issue um and then these are some of the ro some of the uh robots that we deal with there um which is pr it's actually pretty cool it's quite interesting having gotten into robotics that's always a lot of fun uh, here's a video, one of our videos. Um, I'm I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have to switch off the mic in order to show these videos so that I don't get feedback from the television. So I'm just gonna play these videos here quickly for you, <clears throat> um, just to see some of our machines in operation. This is actually our company's video. So here we go.
so this one here this is actually one of our i'm not going to show the name of the company or anything like that just in case you know it's a bit funny by the way i'm speaking on behalf of myself what i'm about to say has nothing to do with any of the companies that are otherwise here represented etc etc um and so on and so forth so this is just me uh this is actually one of our customers who made a video and they're actually using using our our bits and pieces Right, so that gives you a basic idea of the kind of engineering I'm involved in. It's a, a lot of really, really cool stuff that we that we that we work with. Some really cool companies that we work with. So, even though I have no qualification, um, I've I've been involved in various different kinds of industries. So I've worked in. I mean, I've done everything from build these things. I've built. I've built fire trucks. I've built buses i've i've done all kinds i've done all kinds of things and i have i, I even worked in one company uh, it was uh, in we we worked we did stuff for the film industry so because the film industry is constant basically producers cameramen what 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 they come to us and they'd be like we want to be able to do x can you make something that will help us do x so in that that company in particular was one of the most interesting ones because some of the stuff that they asked was completely outrageous did not exist anywhere in the world at all and so there was very very heavy i was very very uh research and development heavy um i mean we did have our regular stuff that we did so anyone that's worked in the film industry uh we made dollies we made we made camera stabilizers we made uh we made cranes we did all kinds of stuff as well we made tracks and and but we made a whole bunch of other little robotic things and stuff like that to help cameramen and and do all these kinds of things so i know what i'm talking about okay <laughs> i i do know what i'm talking about i'm not just some joe smo you know why Zeke? and that's why as soon as this guy said what he says i'm going to show you the video now as soon as he said what he says i i was just like just dude he clearly he either he's either ignorant about what the engineering world is like and what it's doing and what these algorithms are really like in the real world um which makes sense because he's not an engineer he's 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 a, he's a physicist or he does know but he's just he's just lying through his teeth right he's just he's using a very he's being a dis, dishonest disingenuous rhetorical device in order to make the the audience in believe that the, that what he is saying has anything to do with evolution okay so let me show you the video quickly um here it is right so this is him now speaking and he's and and have a look you can even almost talk about needing something supernatural, needing a God, is when you talk about mind. Yep. What's that mean? Oh, okay, I got you. To talk about mind, we need to talk about our origins. To talk about our origins, we need to talk about evolution. I do want to talk about that for a minute. I chuckle sometimes when people talk about what evolution cannot do. I'm about to chuckle at what he thinks evolution can do because while people were arguing with each other sorry just pay attention to his demeanor i know this is irrelevant and it's a little bit ad hominem and stuff like that but his demeanor if you watch the video and you see his demeanor compared to william lane's demeanor this guy is just he's just so bloody arrogant it's it's actually annoying and just the words that he's saying it's just it's irritating it just makes me want to actually just go over and, and just slap him over the back of the head it's like have some humility right about evolution a bunch of really hard-nosed pragmatic practical engineers just went off and started using it there are these things called evolutionary algorithms where you start with a whole bunch of random designs you throw away the designs that don't work so well you keep the ones that do Having done that, you shuffle the properties of the ones that you've kept. 
randomly change a few things, do it over again and over again and over again. As you go around and around that loop, what happens is the design keeps getting better and better and better and better. We've been doing evolutionary algorithms for a while now, for long enough to have a good understanding of how they work. The answer is, is that very often evolutionary algorithms just literally mop the floor with traditional design methods. Right, so I'm gonna stop the video there now we're going to get into this, okay? Now, there's a few things he says that are true. Um, this, is, this is actually becoming a lot more common out in the world than people would actually realize, okay? It's this, these, what they call evolutionary algorithms is actually becoming quite widespread, and he is correct. They are extraordinarily useful. They actually really, really are extraordinarily useful um, as a means by which you can take diagrams and uh, blueprints let's say and put the parameters and everything into the computer and have it generate a search for possible solutions and the computers can do the search at a much faster pace than what humans can do and so on and so forth so it really 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 aids the whole R&D process as far as engineers are concerned and it really is it's 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 really is absolutely fantastic but ladies and gentlemen the only reason why it works right the only reason why it works is because there is literally nothing darwinian about it just because they call it evolutionary algorithms right and just because they call it darwinian does not mean that it has anything to do with darwinianism with anything darwinian the only literally the only reason it works is because it's got literally nothing to do with darwinian uh, evolution at all and i'm going to demonstrate that right so Here's my board. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my engineering blue. Okay. So basically what he says, so not what he says is we have <laughs> we get a whole bunch of random drawings or random diagrams. And we plug them into the into the algorithm. And also hang on. We select which ones work the best. Okay. We select which ones work the best. So there's evaluation. A whole bunch of random he says random diagrams now that's utter bs right from the start you no one ever starts with just a bunch of random diagrams in real ever never okay it's just not true let's say i'm going to i want to design an, uh, uh, an ultrasonic scanner let's say from the examples i want to design the designs that I'm going to use are going to be designs for ultrasonic scanners. So immediately there's an artificial, there's an artificial restraint. Immediately there is a target. Okay. The designs that you plug into here, right? That you plug into here, that you put in there, into your algorithm, uh, in, in, that you consider are already targeted because you know, you know, so we always, when you're talking about these issues, you always have a target, okay? No such thing exists out in nature in Darwinian evolution. There is no target. Evolution does not know where it's going at all. It's not aiming for anything, all right? So from the get-go, this guy is so completely far out it, off. It's just, it's unbelievable. So into here, you're going you're gonna to feed it diagrams right blueprints that more or less have something to do with what your targeted your intended outcome is and you're looking into the future evolution has no target because target implies foresight it implies that evolution knows what it wants to achieve that's nonsense so there's nothing there's nothing random here so then he says it goes over to selection right selection so the he, you discern the blueprints for the that are that work versus the blueprints that don't again this is absolute garbage all the blueprints that go in here are blueprints that work all right over here you're just deciding which ones which ones are closer to what you achieve what you want to achieve than and then those which are not right so the ones that most closely represent the solution to your target to help you achieve your target those are the ones you keep okay 
So that's what you plug in. So it's not, it's not just, it's not random. Okay. There's you select even the selection progress. The selection process is targeted in nature. The selection process is, is not targeted, right? At all. It's like the thing either lives or dies. You're not, you're not trying to get a whale or a dog or a cat, right? Can this thing live or die? And that's it, right? If, if it lives fine, if it dies, well, so the, the selection, they're, they're playing, they're playing uh, loose with the whole definition here of selection. This is nothing like natural selection because the selection, the selection is targeted. Okay. Again, it's targeted. So this is not, this has nothing to do with what you will not find an analog of this in nature. Okay. So this is not random like it would be. So it's not blind. There's nothing blind here. Okay. So selection. So you get the best ones and you plug them in to your algorithm. Your algorithm will then do a cross what they call crossover. So the algorithm will look at all of these, all of these blueprints, right. And sort of, uh, what, what it will do is it will, um, how can you say it will, it will spit out. So what it spits out, are, or what it will spit out here, right? Are variations, right? Are variations of what would of what was plugged in? Okay, you get a whole bunch of of variations. So basically, it's taking what it it's taking that, and it's 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 saying, well, if we make this one a little bit more like that, like that, like that, ba 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 ba, boom and it spits out well these are the possible these are the possible uh, 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 solutions so the fact that they're calling it mutation here is completely retarded because it's not it's not mutation okay so basically it gives you random variations now when you are dealing when you're actually dealing with an evolutionary algorithm you are putting in constraints right when you when you actually look at the program the program you are telling it you are you are literally telling it what to do right and you're telling thing so for for example let's say uh, my target is a squirter system right i'm going to tell the before it does the crossover i'm going to say i have to have a squirter system it so in the algorithm before you before you actually run the algorithm that you are telling it what are the things that are essential to the target so it can't it can't get rid of those all right it has to include x y and z no no such thing happens in evolution is what happens this this represents sexual reproduction more than anything else because with the variations that you have if you think about it genetically you basically have recombinations recombinants all right you have variations but those variations are based on pre-existing on pre-existing models there's nothing new being generated here you merely have a recombination of information you already have and the information was produced it didn't come out of nowhere it didn't come out randomly it was produced i'm going to use the word here let me use green the information id the information was intelligently designed it didn't just burst out of nowhere okay and information is, is, is a metaphysical thing. It's not a real thing, right? So this blueprint, all right? So imagine the blueprint can be DNA. It's the same thing, right? DNA, okay? And then your selection process, you're looking at the DNA, right? In a sense, because you're only dealing with blueprints. You're not dealing with an actual product. Now, here's the thing. Selection over you they're selecting at the DNA at the blueprint at the DNA level. This does not happen in nature Nature so you in nature in um, in genetics you have two concepts you've got Pheno Pheno type And Geno Geno type, okay What's the difference? Genotype is what you are. Phenotype is what you look like. And there's a massive difference. Selection happens here. It does not happen at the gene level. 
it happens at the phenotype it only selection only happens once the genes are expressed so for this to actually resemble anything like evolution you would have to actually build the machine okay you would have to actually build the machine and then run it <laughs> and if it doesn't work scrap it but now here's the thing in nature if it doesn't work right so let's say you've run this process and now you're going through this process again you've got a product you've got the animal right and now there's a mutation let's say there's a mutation evaluation now coming and now it's coming to selection okay and you've got the animal there right if it doesn't work you get that animal dies what happens to that information you lose it completely you start from square one you 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 lose the blueprint so there's no information to keep to come to come in here none none whatsoever the only information that can come into here is what survives okay that information is gone zero and now here's the problem here's the problem all information whether it works or whether it doesn't work is essential is essential right you you have in order for this be to be successful you have to know what doesn't work nature doesn't know what doesn't work right and because nature doesn't know what doesn't work nature can basically spit out the same solution again right that doesn't happen here okay because the engineers we remember what doesn't work and so we're not going to waste time feeding what doesn't work in again right evolution doesn't do that there's no memory right it can try the same idiotic solution a hundred times a thousand times a million times right over and over again okay so th this does not so for example to give you a concept of the idea if i say to you right if i say to you um we need to uh build tires wheels that are square in shape all right you immediately know without the need for argument okay without the need for argument you immediately know that that is a stupid idea all right why is it because you know something about circular wheels or is it because you know something about square wheels it's because you know something about square wheels and what you know about square wheels the knowledge that you have about square wheels is what tells you that it won't work right your knowledge your knowledge that it's a bad idea is based on what you know about square wheels and has nothing to do with what you know about circular wheels because if the knowledge about square wheels didn't exist you would consider square wheels as a possibility until you tested it and saw that it was not viable and therefore you would then obviously then eliminate that no such thing happens in nature no such thing happens in nature at all at all okay it can't because nature nature has no memory it has no target it has no quality control or anything like that even if the thing survives by the skin of its teeth then it survives okay there's, there's none of that so and here's the thing at no point does this explain where the information come from right because here you have blueprint dna here you have blueprint dna the information right where did the information come from they'll never tell you they will tell you that we mutate the information but again <laughs> this mutation <laughs> the crossover so now you have the recombinant and then he says then you mutate it you're not mutating it all right in <laughs> it's not a mutation mutation first of all by saying that it's mutation he's saying that this is random it's not it's not because this is targeted you know what you're looking for and you're telling the, you're telling the algorithm what you're looking for okay you uh, the, the algorithm knows where it's going okay so uh, just for those of you who don't know pheno pho genotype will be like you're a human or you're a dog or you're a cat or you're whatever phenotype is like if you're a cat if if you're a cat phenotype is you are a lion or a tiger or whatever it's what you look like so only then can it select right so it, mutation mutation is an idiotic word to use in engineering because you're not mutating anything 
okay you are not mutating anything because this is this is reconfiguring what you already have it's not actually changing anything that you've got right so so it's not taking like a gear that looks like this and it's got these particular dimensions and changing it it's not doing that you might be able to once you get more advanced now here's the interesting thing this crossover this this um this algorithm who designed it right the algorithm itself was in time designed by an intelligent person okay there's no algorithm out in nature to do this there is no algor algorithm it's completely and utterly blind pure chance so it's utterly blind there's no target there are no constraints there are no constraints because in the crossover you always plug in constraints it has to do this it has to preserve that it needs to go in this direction it, it is guided you have what we call active information in the system the algorithm itself and the and the the information that you plug into the algorithm it's all active useful information right no such thing exists in in uh in in darwinian evolution darwinian evolution comes to the dna right basically is got this information string the letters in your dna and literally randomly just scrambles the crap out of something okay that's what it does and then it forgets about it what it does there has nothing to do with the change that came before or the change that's coming later it has nothing it's not interested in going anywhere there's no target there's no constraints so the, the mutation could give a raccoon a horn on its head for all you know it or it, it could literally it could be anything all right the mutation could be anything and it and mutations are always so what you get here this is a completely idiotic thing right mutation what you have is a change i don't know what it is with evolutionists but they want to everything that's a, everything that's a change they want to call it a mutation right evolutionists are using the word evolution in such a broad way that it is essentially that it is essentially meaningless today right because literally any change any change they call it evolution right so over here and it's not evolution in order for evolution to work they need to explain how it comes across new con new information this is not new for information this is taking pre-existing information which originated in a mind okay originated in a person's mind it's taking pre-existing uh, 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 information reshuffling it right so all it's doing is making a recombinant there's nothing new it's reshuffling it and because there is nothing new there is a limit on the on the number of of solutions There is a limit on the number of solutions it can spit out, which is exactly why, when if you believe in creationism, it's exactly why we believe that all of the different kinds are nested, right? They're they're rooted, right? So you can you can have as many variations of cats as you can possibly imagine, but what the variations are limited by the amount of information that is already contained in the DNA and mutations mutations always are either neutral as in they don't change anything or they remove they destroy information so that you now have less information than what you had before and because you have less information the less information you have the fewer the fewer solutions you can come up with right the fewer different combinations you can come up with right which is why you can take a wolf and make a whole bunch of different dogs but you can't take a chihuahua and work your way backwards all right it's it's impossible because the information has been lost because if you run this process again and again and again and again what the guy doesn't tell you right what this what this physicist doesn't tell you the more you keep on uh selecting it it eventually gets you down to one yeah to one preferred solution it only gets you down to one preferred solution okay and in nature you come also you come down to one prefer or to one solution right 
all and now as an engineer all the ones that were not selected for we still possess that knowledge it's all sitting in a filing cabinet somewhere so that if we want want to run this process again for a different kind of application we can go and retrieve that information and go and and go and run the process again evolution with evolution there's no such thing once you've eliminated and eliminated and eliminated you end up with only one preferred solution and all the information that has been happening in the cycle that was there is lost is lost so once you end up with a cat or a pigeon or whatever that's literally all you can ever do that the evolution stops because there's no more information for it to go to something else right this process this process necessarily makes less and less rather than more and more okay it's backwards it's exactly the opposite of what evolution requires it's not generating variety right it's it's a it's an it's a it's a deductive process it reduces down it reduces down to one solution okay and once you've got that information reduced down to once because here right they plug in a multitude of solutions right so you can plug in over here 10 20 30 right in your evaluation stage what are you value what are we going to plug in, plug in to the selection process 10 20 30 different varieties right you're going to plug it in and you're going to spin this until you come down to one right but in evolution they don't they require something different they want you to start from not from literally from literally nothing from zero and now it's supposed to spit out a million different <laughs> different kind of viable solutions it's idiotic <laughs> it's, it's completely idiot now here's the thing right for the sake of argument for the sake of this video i am not interested in arguing right whether evolution w is true or not okay that's not that's not the remit of this particular video the remit of the particular of this particular video is to show that this does not work in a darwinian way right this is exactly the opposite of what darwinian evolution requires and says is the case out in nature this is there's nothing to do with nature doesn't do this okay so what else can be said um so at every point here so you've got the crossover you run the algorithm the algorithm only exists because it was designed by an engineer right and you can ask anyone that does it deals in computer code anyone that deals in computer code and ask them let's say they're working on a project right go and go and talk to a programmer right they're all square eyed and like this because they're up to here spending endless nights not only writing a program but then debugging this stupid thing because somewhere along the line maybe one one character is now out of place go to them and say listen i'm going to improve <laughs> i'm going to improve your program to you i'm going to go randomly change stuff in your in your in your computer program they will shoot you in the head <laughs> <laughs> they'll kick you out of the house you know get on my side what makes you think you can improve my algorithm my, my my computer code by just going in and randomly changing stuff it's just it's stupidity of the highest order so the information originated in the first place with intelligent minds so this doesn't explain this does not explain where the information comes from in the first place right let alone the amount of information that is required the sheer volume of information that is required in order for you to eventually reach the optimal targeted solution for what you want right the target itself is established right because in nature it doesn't exist the target and uh, anyone that wants to say oh it must survive that's not a target all right because nature is blind random chance when the mutation happens the mutation doesn't know why or what it's mutating for there is no target right the accidental the accidental uh selective pressures in nature are not a target right because the evolution darwinian evolution is not an algorithm that is running towards a solution okay so the target when you're speaking of a target you are necessarily speaking about something that is intentional something that someone that this is going towards something that is predetermined there's a predetermined aim and what and what dictates the preferred solution that pre, the reason it's preferred is because of the is because of the problem that needs to be resolved okay 
evolu Darwinian evolution knows nothing about any of this, right? And this whole, at every single point in this process, right? So you over here, you have the mutations is an idiotic word. They're trying to smuggle this in. It's not a mutation, all right? Because when you do the crossover and there's these mutations, it's not, it's various solutions, right? Various solutions. And most of them, they might be useful. They, so this is degrees of efficiency and not because mutations, a mutation can complete, can, uh, can produce something completely, completely and utterly useless. But that's not what, but the, but the program, because of the constraints that you plug into it, right? So the only time this works is when you actually plug in constraints. You're telling, you are directing the algorithm at every, t you are co always directing the algorithm. The algorithm is directed. There's always functional information in there, right? Specified, specified functional information, right? And the solutions, and then who evaluates the solutions? The human mind is evaluating the solution at every single point, right? There's constantly an intelligent designer involved in the in all of it. And specifically at the or, at the origination, the origination of the blueprints. Where did the blueprints come in the first place come in the first place? For well, Darwinian evolution to be proven as 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 true. It has to explain where the where the information came from in the where the first inf, uh, information came from right and it also has to explain how it can go not from one from one piece of because this right and any engineer knows no, you're working down to one solution you want you want the most what we call elegant solution computer programs use this as well they they are an elegant program right it is the best the best way of constructing or solving whatever problem that you have, right? You're looking for one, the most elegant solution. You are necessarily, the target is necessarily reducing it down to one thing. So you have, evolutionists have to explain how not, not only do you get from nothing, but even if you grant that they have one, how do you get many out of it? You don't, because the process is deleterious. It's always de it is always deleterious, right? You've got one, you now have two and there's a mutation. Oh, I don't like that one, gone. You still only got one, right? And during this process of, of surviving, there's nothing to say that conditions don't change that's gonna then kill the kill the one that, that you already have in the first place, right? So you necessarily, in order to get a preferred solution, you necessarily need to start with many in order to end up with one, rather than to go from one, from one to end up, because this is literally the opposite of evolution. <laughs> literally the opposite of anything Darwinian. I cannot even, I don't even know how to make it more explicit. It's just, it can't, it doesn't work, right? This is not Darwinian. There is literally, they can, just because you call it Darwinian, just because you call it evolution doesn't make it evolution. There's literally nothing. And yes, it's useful. It's mar This whole process is marvelously useful. The only reason why it is useful is because it's literally, there's nothing Darwinian about it. And at every single point, you have intelligent designers involved, engineers, right? Who know where they're going. They know where this is going. If they've, if, if they've put in a whole bunch of blueprints, for an ultrasonic scanner and at the end of this thing it spits out a design for a boat <laughs> right they're going to be like what the hell is going on okay <laughs> but interestingly enough if it spit out a design for a boat then that would that would actually be evolution <laughs> because it it's coming up with information that wasn't there in the first place right and all computer programs suffer with this problem right this is why this is why a lot of people when they talk about artificial intelligence and all oh it's going to take it won't it won't all of the pe all of the things that people are saying about where computers are going to go is absolute rubbish because computers cannot create anything computers cannot generate new information all computers can do is perform perform searches right and the search is is constrained the search is always constrained right the only thing they can do is perform searches according to certain parameters. The only thing they can do is is make recombinations of pre-existing um, um, uh, pre -ex pre-existing information that was fed into it. The c computers can only do what they've been told to do. That is it.
and generate varieties of 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 configure of things that they've already been given that's all they can do and that's all they will ever be able to do the only time a computer can generate new information is when is on the day that a computer behaves in a non algorithmic way right and this is exactly and that's why i'm actually glad that evolutionists and all these kind of people biologists and stuff like that are now coming over into the realm of engineering right because here's the problem the engineers believe the evolutionists believe the biologists they're like yeah yeah but the only reason why they believe the biologists is because they're ignorant of biology they think that they think that the biologists are seeing this out in the real world right <laughs> and the only reason why the biologists think that this that this has anything to do with evolution is because the biologists are completely ignorant of what engineering requires in order for you to actually successfully get get a viable product or an elegant product or solution at the end of it all right the the engineers think that the biologists are seeing something they actually aren't and the biologists are uh, think that the engineers are using a process that they actually aren't <laughs> it's completely it's completely cockeyed it's totally totally cockeyed it doesn't work it just absolutely doesn't work it can it cannot be done um so no this gentleman is 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 either horribly horribly deceived or he's a liar the flat out liar because this is not evolution this is not Darwin. this doesn't if anything if anything this makes the case against evolution even stronger right because for evolution to work and this is this is my i'm going to make an analogy here the only time a computer can will be able to generate new information as in do something that it was never programmed to do at all right is if it behaves in a non-algorithmic way because that's how humans behave we behave in a non in a non-algorithmic way which is why human beings which is why we can contradict ourselves right because we behave in a non-algorithmic way right we do not think even though we can think in an algorithmic way human beings essentially we're not we're non-algorithmic okay and so for evolution to work and to be demonstrated conclusively to the satisfaction of people who do intelligent design and all that kind of stuff they would have to show that evolution is able to function in a non-algorithmic way and and it doesn't because a sorry it does function in an algorithmic way in in a, in a sense because it is because it's con it takes one thing and it reduces mutation so it is kind of an algorithmic way but it will never generate new information the process the process necessarily eliminates reduces or destroys information all the way down basically basically it follows this it follows the laws of thermodynamics where you go from a high concentration of information like and down to a low concentration of viable information because there's a there's a downward gradient rather than an upward gradient which is essentially what evolution would require in order to produce more varieties it would need to start from low information content up to high information content with with all the varieties and stuff like that and what we see in nature is exactly the opposite and this process is exactly the opposite right and the only reason this process works is because um uh engineers are involved which is why you get something useful right but in nature you don't you just you get you get deca you you get loss of information until the animal can no uh, no longer has within its genetic uh resources enough information to adapt at which point it goes extinct and that's why the animals go extinct right because they 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 reach the limit they reach the informational limit of the gene of their dna code to adapt to change their body to change their body plans they reach the limit and so they die off that's why they go extinct right or there's a mutation or something like that which brings about a disease or then kills off a population or be, or the dna the dna code degenerates to the point like uh like anyone who uses microsoft windows right we know that after you've used windows for about a year or two the whole system slows down and becomes completely pathetic you have to do a whole cleanup of the system and reinstall it right because that's 
that's what that's what naturally happens to code it it becomes useless it follows it follows the thermodynamic downward gradient until it becomes completely and utterly useless so that you can't get anything new out of it right you have to start fresh again and that's what you see out in nature you have a downward gradient right so this is this has in common with it a downward gradient but the reason why it's not a downward gradient to something destructive is because the human beings are involved so you're getting something elegant rather than something that is that is a mutant you can't function anymore has to be killed off right so yeah this the ladies and gentlemen <coughs> this this is uh this is ridiculous if uh, evolutionists are going to use are going to use this as as evidence that evolution can can work out in nature nonsense absolute nonsense because there is literally there is literally nothing like this out in nature at all at all at all and here's the thing right let's go just for a bit of interesting interesting information <laughs> yeah let's talk about information as an extra bit of interesting information we know that information is not physical right because the atheist's contention is that everything 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 is physical okay everything is physical where's my black pen i lost my black pen i'm gonna have to use my engineering blue again <coughs> right information is not physical all right which is part of which is that is that is it's exactly part of the problem right because the reason why only an intelligence can 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 generate information and kind of stuff is precisely because human beings com are according to a christian were composed of two substances we have a meta and a physical right we have a metaphysical substance so it's metaphysical and we have a physical substance right so this here would be the mind would be the soul the spirit and all that kind of stuff and physical this would be the body okay sort of thing so we are not purely physical right so when we're generating new informations we're, we're generating it from this point from this part yeah the metaphysical part the mind the consciousness we're generating it from that now the physical right it can contain and transmit information hang on no it doesn't contain the physical can only transmit information it never contains information right because information is not physical now how do we make this case and this is not me i'm not a genius i didn't think this up myself and so on and so forth right so if you believe in pure materialism and pure naturalism and all that kind of stuff right the evolutionists, the Darwinian, all the kind, they say that the, ne the, the, the physical world is constantly in flux. It's constantly changing all the time. Okay? So, if information was physical, you would expect that it would always change. Right? So, I'm going to write over here, right? I'm going to write the word, uh, let's see. What's a, what's a good word? Hmm. You know what? Astrami Mustard All right Pastrami mustard sandwich, okay? We have information here, all right? Now, how do we know that this is that there's nothing physical about it? Now, here's the thing, right? <coughs> When we look at something like DNA, right, we have to ask, how did that DNA end up there? There's no physical necessity as to why the A, G, C, and uh, A, G, C, and T, I think it is, are, are there in that specific order. Because there's no physical necessity that it has to be that way, which is why mutations can happen, okay? So, for example, there's nothing about the physical nature of this board, right, or the pen, that makes it necessary that I can only write this on the board, okay? At all, right? So there's no physical necessity to in either in the chemistry or the physical properties of this board that I could write anything here. I could put any information here. 
okay so this so the answer to the question where did this why is this inf this like this it's because the answer is it was put in there by an intelligence okay and i know i'm being very 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 gracious to myself by calling myself intelligent but for the sake of the argument okay it was put there it was arranged this way by an intelligence okay now how do we know that the information is not physical all right where did the information begin it began in my mind first of all okay so how did it get to the board okay we have to well how did the information get go from my mind to the board right the information started out in my mind somewhere we don't know in that metaphysical realm that we're talking about right <coughs> and it acted upon my physical body in my brain in the form of elect so that information was carried by electrical pulses from the brain to my muscles right it went from electrical energy to mechanical energy to move my arm in order to write that down the information then went from from electrical to physical to mechanical to chemical right so the, the ink of the pen the information is now the information is still the same notice how the physical properties that carry the information have changed at every single point yet the information has stayed exactly exactly the same so it's now chemical Inf the, 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 the chemical substrate is now carrying the information. The information is not, is, is not contained in there. Because even if I erase this, the information still exists. It's just this board no longer carries that information. But the information still exists. Okay. So it's now being carried by chemical. This is what we call semiotics. Right? It's now being carried by chemical. It's now contained chemical information. Now. How are you able to see this, right? It's because the information goes from chemical to photon to light into the camera, right? So it's literally going, it's, so the information is piggybacking and now it's duplicating, all right? It's duplicating because the information is still here even though it's now at you as well and in your mind as well and in my mind as well. So now the, the information has been do and it's still exactly the same. It's now not even it's now not even being carried by the same metaphysical mind. It's now in your mind. A completely different metaphysical mind, but the information is still the same. Okay? So it's con the information piggybacks is, is duplicated, turns into photo because the only reason you can see this is because of the light. The light goes to the camera, right? And it gets converted again into into what we call digital information right also also electrical because this is all operating electrically there's you know so digital electrical goes to the goes to the uh, computer right into the computer digital information right gets recorded on let's say my hard drive right and it's stored in there and depending on what kind of a hard drive you, you, you're you using, there might be a magnetic basis there, or whatever the case might be, right? So that it goes back to a very, very physical type of thing. Then I upload it. So that information then goes to, again, goes to uh, through the fiber optics and all that kind of stuff. Stuff, it's, 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 um, goes and then ends up on your computer. And then it goes, gets traversed again, and then ends up into from your computer you download it you go watch it on youtube it's all digital right so now that information is digital it goes onto your television screen or your computer screen it then again gets converted into uh, an optical uh, uh, uh it's a photon again because that light then reaches your eyes it hits your eyes and gets tran transferred as electrical neuron neuron information and goes into your brain and then the mind the mind picks up on that and understands ah a strummy mustard sandwich <coughs> right and here's the thing right that's the weird that's the weird thing is this information can even affect you because some of you might be thinking pastrami sandwich and you might even be getting hungry right so I'm not I'm you're thousands of miles away and you might even be getting hungry and all that kind of stuff information is not physical it never is the information it can the information can be lost Right, we only speak of information as being lost, right? Or the so when when you say that information is destroyed, 
you're not it's not the information itself that's being destroyed it's the substrate which carries the information that's being destroyed the information still exists right which is why when we're doing science and stuff like that we're not inventing information we're making discoveries we discover the world and all that kind of stuff that information is out there for us to discover things like laws of logic things like mathematics and all these 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 are not physical things and yet they influence us they influence the world the vast majority if the metaphysical didn't exist if the immaterial didn't exist the physical the whole physical realm would be completely irrelevant it's what drives everything it's the basis for everything when you look at life there is no such thing as life which does not carry information in it the dna strand is information and if you go and you screw with that you kill off the life and that information comes from a mind every single time because the mind is metaphysical right and because we believe that us human beings that's our argument for god that ultimately all of the information in the universe all the stuff that's there for us to be discovered the laws of logic or the laws of nature because a law is not a physical thing a law is a metaphysical thing it's a dis it describes something it tells you what's going on mathematics all these things that are universally applicable and unchanging no matter how much the physical world changes these things do not change these things do not change even your identity even your physical body you replace every atom in your body every cell in your body every single one every seven years roughly every seven years that means you no longer have the same body that you had seven or ten years ago and depending on how old you are you might be already on your third or fourth completely brand new body yet you are still you you have identity over time you are still you even though your body is completely changed even though your physical nature has completely changed and those people as we grow old we realize you know your mind may still be sharp and whatever but your body's failing you the person's still there that metaphysical part is still there but the body's failing you but if the body could go on forever hey the mind you know is a physical problem right we are not only physical nature is not the universe is not only physical it's metaphysical it relies on metaphysical and all information comes from a mind and that's why we talk about intelligent design right and some people that believe intelligent in design do believe in evolution okay so this is not a exclusively creationist argument a lot of people most of the people if i'm not mistaken dr stephen mayer he believes in in deep time all right he believes in a lot of evolutionary things but the only time that anything evolution it's is the theory of evolution itself is almost evidence for a god because evolution because that the whole thing the process that i was telling you about if there were not human beings involved in that process you would never you would never get anything out of it so the whole the whole thing with evolution is actually itself you if even if evolution is true <laughs> it's impossible without an intelligent mind behind it even if it's true there must still be a mind because even if we go and try and plug in a a, a darwinian thing even into engineering algorithms right we know that the only way it works is if there are minds involved essentially essentially that to the point where it literally does not represent anything darwinian because if it's darwinian there should be no human beings involved there should be no memory there should be no target it should be completely random the selection is not the selection is not selecting for anything <coughs> to say to say to say that it is selection natural selection is actually a bit of a misnomer because selection implies that something is choosing that there is an end game no it's it's completely by accident it's complete there is selection is actually a misnomer but you know language is limiting it language limits us right only 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 intelligent beings select nature does not select 
nature nature just tries to kill <laughs> and it can either manage to kill or it can't it's not it's impartial it's not choosing anything right nature just kills that's it right imagine the human being now uh, i'm doing an evolutionary imagine my imagine what my boss would say right we go and build the machine and i i randomly go and see if i can take a sledgehammer and see if i can smash the machine <laughs> i'd lose my job in five seconds <laughs> they'd probably use the sledgehammer on me right it's just it, it doesn't work it's simply just it doesn't work and i'm, I'm not trying to be laugh and i know i'm laughing and making light and you've got to be a bit good human about these things let me tell you man this this it doesn't work at all it, at all and this is one of the things that made me go from being an atheist to being a christian because it just does not work if you know enough about what is required what darwinian evolution require wants and what is actually required to produce something, to actually make something exist in the real world, which engineers know all about. We're constantly trying to make things actually exist. And this is the problem with a lot of physicists. A lot of physicists probably couldn't even build a sandwich, okay? A pastrami mustard sandwich, right? That's why they don't get it. Too, uh, too much... And this is a problem with some of the hard sciences is that I think a lot of what they're doing is just far too abstract, which is why they think it can work because it's abstract as long as it can maybe make sense in the mind. Right. And, and this guy, you know, he's like, and some really hard nosed pragmatic engineers just went off and did it. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you don't really, you, I uh, let me tell you, you don't really know what we're doing in the real world in order to actually build things. You don't realize the constraints and the and stuff like that out in the real world. Clearly, this guy has no idea what it actually takes to actually make something appear in the real world. The effort and the constraints and the intelligence and stuff that goes behind it. And it is intelligence because let me tell you, a stupid person could not build a machine. Or at least not a decent one. So it's got to be highly intelligent. It's why engineers are intelligent. Engineers are not stupid, right? Engineers are not stupid. Okay, and engineering existed long before science did, okay? People like, and this is one of the, I actually, I wonder why, I, it actually makes me wonder why engineers, especially atheists one, are, are all like, oh, you know, uh, science and this and science that and stuff. Engineering existed before science. <laughs> Most of the great, most of the great advancements in, 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 in technology and all that kind of stuff had, didn't have much to do with science, it had a lot to do with engineering, right? Because the science will, the scientist will come up with some stupid idea, then he has to go to the engineer and it's like, listen, mate, do you think that, is it, is it possible? And the engineer will say, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's possible. Or be like, no, dude, just, just shut up and go and go and sweep the streets and do something practical and useful for a change right so it's like the for those of you that know the big bang theory it's like it's it's like the bigotry of sheldon towards uh, uh towards howard right howard who's the engineer you know the only the only one the only one of those three that actually did anything useful was howard right and yet and and Sheldon was the absolute most abject, useless idiot of all of them. But he was the most condescending of, you know, on Howard all the time. And that's, that's exactly what it's like in the real world, right? You couldn't have civilization without, without engineers. But let me tell you, you could have civilization without scientists. Because we, ha we did. It's happened before, right? You get these atheists that, oh, all these advancements, you know indoor toilet and and stuff like that it's like no engineers invented most of those things right we'll give you guys penicillin and all that kind of stuff you know but come on anyway ladies and gentlemen i think i've i think i've done my bit to explain this issue um i didn't really want to get into evolution and stuff like that because the whole creation evolution argument can get a little bit idiotic sometimes and convoluted and everyone in his dog out there is is doing it and, and you know i didn't really want to get involved 
but I will every now and then on something that I feel like I've got a particular impetus to do, you know, such as this one. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your viewership. I hope this was informative and you enjoyed it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I certainly had a good chuckle at this guy when he said this. It's like, come on, dude, you have no idea, right? He's clearly never built a machine or, or written an algorithm in his life if he thinks this actually... Or either that, or it's just cognitive dissonance, right? They 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 can see it has nothing to do one with the other, and yet they just continue to believe that it is, right? It's it's crazy, absolutely crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for your viewership. God bless you, and cheerio. Till next time, bye.